welcome back to the channel everyone as you know it's time for papa's comic books and coffee okay let's see who decided to join us today we look at that it is x-men and the micronauts number two 60 cents back in 1984 title of this story is into the abyss this is by bill mantlo and butch greasy and don't forget this book and others right there we see this book and others are available on my ebay page papas-comic-books Hit that like button if you don't mind. Hit that subscribe button. Let me get this back into a little bit of a focus here where I want it. Hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you want to hear. If I have it in my library, I'll be sure to pick it up and put it on here. Now, don't forget, this is available on my eBay page, Papas-Comic-Books. Let's get into it. The x Knots versus the Microman. What? This place, this place is not real. It is a realm of nightmare. And like all nightmares, it can hold no terror, save for those who are trapped within it. I'm having a tough time already. Okay. Those lost in the twisted terror of this deadly Dreamscape are the mighty Micronauts, heroes of the Microverse. They are not feeling very heroic at the moment. A nuts, is the is this where you we just take go in to die? We are not dead, bug. We su survived our initial encounter with the entity. I think. Are you take sure, big buddy? I. Ain't everything's kind of hazy. We allied ourselves with Baron Karza to battle the tick ent entity. Karza's armies got tick wiped, and I've went down to defeat them with with them. So where the tick shrew are we now? Wherever the entities imprisoned us, bug. There seems. But one way to go in the prison marionette, down to the abyss. Then lead the way, Huntar. But remember, the most important things now is for us to stick together. The sudden psych assault catches the, them unaware, smashing them down to where the weirdlings wait to separate them from each other. So much for the most important things now. So I guess we ain't dead or else why would the entity be trying to kill us? Maybe slow death by torches, his stock and trade. He did display a sixth sense of humor when he destroyed Darnell. Only it looks like the joke's on me this time. The weirdling sudden assault sends bugs sprawling into the slime. It covers him, envelops him, and within a strange metamorphosis takes place. Changed bug hatches out. What once had been a two-legged insectivoid now crawls over the ground as an actual insect. Finished with bug, the weird lings turn on. Fireflight? She is a psychic sauntress. Her melodies attune her to the binding energy of the microverse the Enigma Force. Mm, I'm having a tough time here. Thus, her singing is both her weapon and her defense, but the weirdings have arcane powers of their own. As they suck the sound waves out of the very air to be suddenly deprived of her song, leaves the fairy queen maiden quiet, helpless. He is Acrier, former king of Spartak, 
a warrior born. He fears nothing that his energy sword can slice. Encased in his Spartak forged armor, he is all but invincible. Thus the assault upon him strikes at the spot no armor can shield. Acrea's heart, soul of Spartak, lest mine eyes deceive me, tis my beloved Cecilia, scalthing you cliff. Heavy with child, she has set out into the wildness, wildness to give birth, alone after her acruyer fashion. Away, vile weirdlings, though your numbers appear infinite, thou shalt not keep the mighty acronier from attending the birth of his firstborn son. Labored breathing and woman's cries shatter the sudden stillness. Though Cilicia and I are bonded man and we're wife, she considers me a traitor for having sacrificed our world to defeat Baron Carza. I have never been able to convince her otherwise. Still our child is about to be born. Perhaps his birth will soften her heart towards me, that we may meet again as lovers and not as warriors opposed. You delude yourself, traitor. My heart harbors only hate for you. And this child wrenched in now from my loins shall be the instrument of my hate and your destruction. I think I shall name him Shaitan. The Arcadiers are an ebon-skinned race, but occasionally an albino is born among them. Such children are considered harbingers of holocausts to come. The last such birth was Acroyer's twin. His hatred for the black-skinned brother knew no bounds. It led to the destruction of Spartak. Cilicia, by the word my no, his name too was Satan. Even as Acroyer succumbs to his own private horror, Huntar, the living weapon, finds himself accosted. He who, has, he who was human, once before Baron Khazar's body, Banks made him a monster, now finds himself surrounded by abhorrent abominations. Yet he is a micronaut. He will not yield without a fight. You surround me, you hulking horrors. Now let us see if you can slay me. Slay you, hunter? Why ever should we wish to slay? One who is as much a horror as we. They do not attack him, they accept him. Overwhelmed by the horror of what he has become, the living weapon cries out for his lost, in, his lost humanity. Elsewhere, Marionette shudders at his screams. I've lost sight of the others. What is happening to me? And what nightmare has the entity in store for me? The warrior prince's answers is not long is coming, scanning the lightning horizon she espies an arena. It's just like the one in Homeward, Homeworld, my poor plundered planet where Baron Karza would hold grim and gruesome games, sacrificing for sport all those considered ill-suited to terrible transformations in his diabolical body banks. It was in an escaping from that arena that the Micronauts were born. It was there that I ceased being a pampered princess and became a warrior, adopting the name Marionette by way of dreading my former master Karza with the fact that I was no puppet of his any longer. By the Enigma Force, what's happening to me? As phantasmic observers stare silently on, the strong-willed warrior woman finds herself losing control until she performs a lewd dance for the edification of the mob, acting for all the world like a puppet on a string. It is then that Princess Mary Sykes suffers a staggering blow as the realization sweeps over her that all she has ever been, despite her denials, is a marionette. He is the last micronaut to be made to suffer Commander Arturus Ron. How could I have failed to anticipate an attack? We were captives of the entity on his territory. Any true leader would never lead, have allowed his troops to become dispensed, dispersed. Ah, a graveyard. This man fancies himself leader of men, from cadet to space glider. He trained for that. 
task. And so today, his commander of the, uh, he is commander of the Micronauts. Now, it appears that he has failed, not only them, but himself as well. Mar, bug. And Akroyer, Biotron, Devil, Microtron, Nanotron, Firelight, Slug, Afroid, Farsight, Argon, all Micronauts once, all dead now. Because of him, how can any man live with such failure? Obviously, Arteris ran cannot. Within him, his soul, his self-respect shrivels and dies. Is that he? Is that in that he is not alone? One nightmare ends, another is about to begin. Oh, my poor children, overwhelmed by darkness, come then, follow my voice, let it lead you. Oh, you can get this from Toys R Us, this bike. Too bad there are no more Toys R Us. To the light, the entity stands, golden armor, gleaming amid the polished surfaces of the banquet room, beyond compare. Drawn to the kindness that they detect in his honeyed voice, like cowering dogs slavering for a friendly stroke after a brutal beating, the Micronauts slither, crawl, dance, and drag themselves into the presence. Ah, you have suffered. Someone has hurt you. Draw near. Set aside your fear. I do not intend to hurt you, but to heal you. That once made whole, you will serve me with all your hearts and minds. Oh, gladly, Master, gladly. How? Be well, then. My children, be mine. Interlude. At that moment, at Professor Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, on Earth, Charlie Xavier slumps exhausted over his computer console. His attempt to locate and identify the entity having given way to an irresistible need to sleep. Clustered outside his lab, fresh from the morning swim, are his students, the new mutants. Oh, Danielle has blood in her eyes, Sam. Try that stunt again, Da Costa. You're on your own, Bobby. All of you, shush. Ark, the entity weakens suddenly. How come, Rain? See for yourself, Sam. We must not disturb the professor. And just as suddenly regains his strength. Weak, power slipping. By all that's unholy, I swear I shall never succumb to such moments of weakness again. I shall see it to the end, to that he who is responsible for these lapses is rendered incapable of causing them. And you, my grateful children, my mesmerized micronauts, shall help me towards that goal. How may we serve you, Master? Gifted you may be, micronauts, but in my scheme of things, you're still only children. Your past only believed and cherished all that were, no more. Are you not pleased? And grateful, are you not eager to begin your holy work? Yes, Master, oh yes, I'm so glad. You'll soon have a chance to prove yourselves. Others have been dispatched from earth to oppose me. We must see to it that they get the welcome they deserve. You will become a force that will ravage first your own mic microversal cosmos and then the microverse itself. And with the mere thought of the entity, they are transformed into an evil mockery of those whom they go to destroy. Elsewhere, the bioship emerges from the space wall that forms the boundary between micro and microverse. Aboard this sentiment, living starship in place of its fellow micronauts is that group's bittersweet, deadliest foe, Baron Karza, and his newfound allies, the uncanny X-Men? Behold, homeworld, my seat of power and governance, Fantastic. The planets are all linked in the form of a molecular chain. However, as the bioship closes in on its destination and images from the planetary surfaces begin appearing on its iPort telescreens, Nycrola's mood turns somber. Yours does not seem the most joyful of homes, Air Baron. There was a rebellion against my lawful authority, X-Men. I am merely taking steps as your ruler would to suppress such activities and ensure they do not recur. 
That ain't quite the way Bioship tells it, bub. He says you're the you're the usurper who slaughtered homeworld's rightful rulers and set yourself up as the as its tin pot di dictator. That accusation is hardly surprising, Wolverine, since this vessel is one of those rebels I refer to. Do you deny them, Karza? Does it matter, Storm? Maybe we're picky about whose butt we'll pull out of the fire, you know? I'm not overjoyed by your presence either, little man. One of the burdens of the leadership of X-Men is that you must occasionally join with the devil to defeat the common foe. If you deny me aid, it is not I who will suffer, but the countless inhabitants of the microverse. The entity takes no prisoners. Can you leave my people to such a fate? We gave our word, Karzor, the X-Men will not be forsworn. How noble those lives matter, not a whit to me. He truly does not care and care less if we know it. He's right, though, Colossus. Perhaps, but is life under Carza's rule really any better? That depends, I guess, on how badly a person wants to live. This behemoth is not the simpleton he first appears. None of the X-Men have yet realized that I am not the, their com companion, Kitty Pride, but born Carza trapped in her body as she is in mine. At present, it suits my purpose that they do not learn. Fortunately, my mental powers are unimpaired by this transition. I still have complete control over my body. The girl cannot betray me. Why should we trust you? What choice have you? We are allies, X-Men for the term of the Alliance. I pledge neither betrayal nor deception. If that does not satisfy you, put your faith in this roboid vessel. His loyalty to Acuron's ran is absolute. Carzer is lying about something but his words contain just enough truth to make it impossible to tell where. So where do we go from here, bub? The entity controls the fringe world nearest the space wall. He evidently draws his powers from Earth, though Bioship and I were unable to pinpoint the source. The entity is a most formidable foe. My Starfleet, led by the Micronauts, was wiped out by him. The Micronauts captured, and with a snap of his fingers, the entity obliterated an entire planet. Your suggestion we follow in their footsteps? The entity seems le linked to you, X-Men. Hopefully, you might be able to discover a means of combating that my forces could not. In the meantime, I shall remain on Homeworld to raise another fleet and to dev devise new and more deadly weaponry in case you fail. Such a battle in no place for a child. Perhaps it would be better to leave Kitty Pride with me. He has a point, Storm. I am kind of scared. The X-Men who face brood, Morlocks, and even Dark Phoenix without a flinching, I find that hard to believe. We look after our own, Baron Kitty. Stays with us. Curse the Wind Witch. I am of no use to anyone in this baby's form. Very well. They haven't. They have it your own way. Then have it your own way. Until we meet again, Baron, Karza Kid bids you all good fortune. Don't mind the Baron when X-Men 2 used to be getting his way, his own way and inc incinerating any opposition he hates, being polite to people he'd rather squish. If you ask me, despite the risk, your friend is better off out of his clutches, especially since he's so eager to get a hold of her. As Bioship warps out of the homeworld system, Karza's teleport beam deposits his body now inhibited by Kitty Pride, mine in the noisome body banks overseen by his chief scientist and Minister de Grand. No, this can't be happening. I'm prisoner in this stupid but suit of armor in Karza's body. I can hear, see, think, but I can't move or communicate except as Karza's directions. I've been trying to break free to gain control, but his will on my psi powers are too strong. I don't have the skill or knowledge to compensate. Where am I? I am... Uh, anyway, what is this place? My lord, how fares your struggle with the entity? No answer is something wrong? Or should I say fantastically right for me? Uh-oh, I don't like the way this creep is looking at me. 
If my suspicions are correct, and the armor is now merely an inanimate shell, then the moment of de Gracie's triumph is at hand. Just what I need. Place intrigue. Palace intrigue. At last, the greater you reveal, you reveal your true self, your treacherous ambitions to me. Master, a holographic astral projection. Forgive me, Baron, have mercy. Silence, lackey. You will treat my armor as you would me. The slightest disrespect, much less outright treachery, and you will regret it. Restore the body banks to your full operational capacity. Create for me an army of dog soldiers, the like of which our cosmos have never seen. If I must sacrifice every inhabitant of the microverse in order to crush the entity of the grade, then by Dallin and Sepsis, I shall. Meanwhile, we are hearing our destination. We are near our destination, X-Men. How do you know, Gospel and Bioship? That bond I was broken when Cars and I fled to Earth after our initial defeat. But since returning, Colossus, I've sensed him once more. I can't receive any specific thoughts. There's too much psych interference, probably generated by the entity. But the link does enable me to home in on Commander Rand's location. Storm keeps staring at me. Does the witch suspect? Why was Karza so concerned about Kitty? It was very out of character. I wish one of us were a proper telepath so we could know her mind as well as his. Bioship is your Psylink reciprocal? You mean, is the commander aware of me and my thoughts? Of course. Brace for landing, please, X-Men. We've arrived. Bump. They say, my friends, that any landing you walk away from is a good one. That idiot ship sure picked a heck of a time to, be pro to prove it. Everyone okay? Bumps and bruises, mind Freud. Nothing more. Can you sense the Micronaut ship of, or the entity? Ship, bioship, nightcrawler, check its systems. Minutes later, nothing functions. Storm, the vessel is completely inert. The roboid equivalent, I'd say, of being in a coma. You don't look surprised, darling. Ran his prisoner somewhere. Somehow the entity used the mind link of the lower bit bio ship and us into his clutches for all the knows he might have been controlling or at least influencing the ship from the moment we entered the microverse. Lords of Earth are an heir. X-Men, come see what I have found. Incredible. It's as if it was six inches tall. Rural crazy as it sounds like our lawn. You mean a facsimile so perfect it fools even the in enhanced senses? I would not have imagined such a deception possible. Me neither. But why go to so much trouble? Kitty, phase through this door and recon reconnoiter. Storm, I, I don't know how to properly use the brat's ability, but slaying, but saying so will reveal my deception. Let me provide your entrance, Storm. So much for subtly. Huh. Inside sights and smells are as correct as the ones on the lawn. Perhaps the mansion was shrunk and transported to the microverse as well. Fascinating concept, Colossus. But Wolverine, do you not feel a sense of wrongness about this place? Actually, Nightcrawler, a more appropriate description would be feeling of evil. Welcome all to Professor Xavier's alternate school for forgiving youngsters. Forgive the youngsters. As you X-Men inherited mantle of responsibility of our processes, the original, original team of mutants, so have I gathered their worsh, worthies to serve as your replacements. Is that Professor Xavier? Storm, those beside him are the Micronauts. Also, you fought by their sides to save their lives. How perceptive, Nightcrawler, but when you last met them, you met them, you say you were big and they were little? Now, those tables have been reversed. Alas, the task I set for them is somewhat different. Scatter, X-Men, scatter! James Bond, a Majesty's Secret Service. Wolverine, take care, the Micronauts are enslaved. They cannot help themselves. 
I ain't got much choice, Petey. You rather I let the creep squash you? Wolverine's retractable claws are adamantium, the strongest metal known, but they're so small now they'll do Huntor little harm. Only the fact that Wolverine's bones are laced with the, that miracle metal, making them virtually unbreakable, saves him from certain death at the hands of Bug's rocket lance. Too late, Nightcrawler teleports to his companion's aid. Professor Xavier is a telepath storm. He'll know of every move the instant we think of it. I sense no mind touch, Kurt. And the Micronauts are responding too slowly. They seem familiar with our tactics, but not our specific moves. Storm's purview is the weather in all its myriad aspects. She uses lightning to deal with the marionette. But what manner of being in the cosmos or our own knows us so well to mimic our reality perfectly? A pity, alien, you will not survive to learn. Colossus was right. We are crippled by our own reluctance to use lethal force against the Micronauts. But if we do not, we are lost. That scream tearing at my mind. Splendid fire fire flight. However, my children, one, one of our foes still remains at liberty. Is no power in existence the equal of his misbegotten entity? I can do nothing in this body. I must escape to learn its strengths and abilities and hide until the armada I summon from homeward arrives. Poor pretty little thing. More like a broken doll than a human being. But of course, that is what all living things are to me. Not but toys. With these X-Men, once I've broken their spirits as I did the Micronauts, I shall play such a game. Ha <laughs> ha, they're in his hand as will shake the universe to its very foundations. Homeward, home world. Baron Carza, your scream. What has happened? What does it mean? Is, is there anything I can do? Your solicide is touching, Degrade. But to answer your question, my mind, this armored body, body is once more my own. I am free to speak, to move. And at last, most importantly, to act, to be continued. That was X-Men number two from 1984. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a long read. Don't forget, this book and others is available on my eBay page, Papas-Comic-Books. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you thought about it. And as I always say... That was easy. Until next time, Papa is out.